Half Dude here, getting ready to look at parabolas. The parabola is an important shape in mathematics and in the physical world. When drawn on a graph, it looks a bit like the letter U. It's the basis for lenses found in telescopes, the microphones those guys on the sidelines of football games carry so you can hear all the action, and it's used in determining the speed and trajectory of flying objects. See, that guy needed to know more about parabolas. A parabola is the graph of a quadratic function, and a quadratic function is one that has a square as its highest exponent. The standard form of a quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, when a doesn't equal zero. So let's take that quadratic function and put some values in for a, b, and c. We'll replace the a with two, the b with four, and the c with negative three. And we can simplify it a little by changing the plus negative three to minus three. As with any equation, we can substitute values for x and solve for y, then put those points on a graph. We'll take the numbers 2, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 2, and substitute them into the equation. When x equals 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 8 is 16, and 16 minus 3 is 13. So, y equals 13. We can perform the same operations when x equals 1. So y equals 3, and so forth. Then we'll take the points and put them on the graph. If we connect the points that we have so far, the graph appears to reach a point where it completely changes direction. Also, notice that two points have the same y value, 0, negative 3, and negative 2, negative 3. Coincidence? Let's find out. We'll take the next two lower values for x, negative 3 and negative 4, and substitute them into the equation, and graph the points negative 3, 3, and negative 4, 13 do indeed have the same y values as two other points. When we connect these points with the rest of the graph, we have a parabola. Let's take a look at some of the points on the parabola. Notice that the parabola has a turning point, a point where the graph changes direction. This point is called the vertex. As you look at the points, you may notice that the pairs seem to go together. In fact, if we consider a vertical line passing through the vertex, you notice that each point to the left of the vertical line has a corresponding point to the right. We say that this graph has symmetry, meaning that each side of the graph is a mirror image of the other. And that vertical line is called the axis of symmetry. If we folded the graph on that axis of symmetry, all the points on the left would cover all the points on the right. We can use the idea of symmetry to help us graph the parabola. The equation for the axis of symmetry can actually be found using the coefficients of the quadratic equation and this formula. If the quadratic equation is in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, then the axis of symmetry can be expressed by the equation x equals negative b divided by 2a, where b is the coefficient of the x or linear term, and a is the leading coefficient, the coefficient of the x squared or quadratic term. So, in our original example, y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 3, b is 4, and a is 2. When those values are substituted into the equation and simplified, the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. On a graph, that's the vertical line passing through negative 1 
on the x-axis. So now we know that our parabola is going to wrap around that axis of symmetry. Next, we need to know where the vertex will be. We know the vertex has to be on that axis and that every point on that axis has an x value of negative 1. So we'll go back to the original equation and substitute negative 1 for x. Watch out for those negative signs as we solve for y. Remember, negative 1 squared is positive 1. And we find that when x equals negative 1, y equals negative 5. Therefore, our vertex is the point negative 1, negative 5. We can indicate that on the grid. We mark the vertex as negative 1, negative 5. Now we have a starting point for our graph. But now we need more points to complete the parabola. One point that's convenient to find is the y-intercept, the point where the parabola will cross the y-axis. Remember, all the points on the y-axis have an x value of 0. If we take our equation and set x equal to 0 and solve for y, we get y equals negative 3, which, by the way, was the c term, the constant in our quadratic equation. And that will always be the y-intercept. So our y-intercept is negative 3. Now we have two points on our graph. Our third point will be very easy to find if we use the idea of symmetry. Now remember, for each point on the right of the axis, there's a corresponding point on the left. Therefore, since the y-intercept is one unit to the right of the axis of symmetry, there must be a point one unit to the left. That's the point negative 2, negative 3. Now we have three points. A couple more would be nice. Let's substitute x equals 1 into the original equation. If we simplify, y equals 3, indicating that the point 1, 3 is on the parabola. So, does that mean we just found one more point for our graph? No. We actually found two more points. Don't forget about symmetry. Our calculation just gave us the point 1, 3. But the point on the left of the axis of symmetry that corresponds to 1, 3 is the point negative 3, 3. That gives us five points, enough for us to draw the graph of y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 3. Sometimes the parabola will appear to be upside down. This happens when the leading coefficient of the polynomial is negative. All right, you can get me down now. Guys? If the coefficient of the x squared term in our quadratic function had been negative 2, the parabola would have looked very different. The axis of symmetry found by x equals negative b divided by 2a would have been x equals 1. The vertex, found by substituting 1 in for x and solving for y, would have been 1, negative 1. The y-intercept, found by substituting 0 in for x, would have been negative 3. Oh, and remember, you can save time by just reading the constant in the equation as the y-intercept. That gives us the y-intercept, and also gives us a point on the other side of the axis of symmetry, 2, negative 3. And to get one more point, substitute x equals negative 1, and that gives us the point negative 1, negative 9, and its symmetrical counterpart, 3, negative 9. Connect the points, and we see that this parabola opens downward, where our earlier parabola opened upward. When the parabola looks like a U and the vertex is the lowest point on the graph, we say that the vertex is a minimum. If the parabola looks like an upside down U and the vertex is the highest point on the graph, we say that the vertex is a maximum. Together, we covered a lot of information about parabolas. We can determine which direction the parabola will open and decide whether the vertex is a maximum or minimum by looking at the sign of the leading coefficient. 
we can find the axis of symmetry using x equals negative b divided by 2a. Then use the axis to help us find the vertex. We can calculate the y-intercept or just read it from the equation. And we can use substitution to find other points and symmetrical points to help us complete the graph. And we couldn't have done it without you.